Hello my art loving friends, I hope you are doing well today. So I am totally exhausted from doing an art commission over the last couple of days. I've kind of worked on it nonstop. So what I like to do when I still want to do a little bit of art but don't want to think about it, like no mental thinking, no physical thinking, like nothing hard, mostly mental. I find stuff to do that is just fun, where I can use my art supplies, see the beautiful colors, and that's what we're gonna do today. So I created this beautiful palette. <laughs> I say it's beautiful because they are beautiful colors in a video not that long ago, last week or the week before probably. And these are Imgram watercolors. And today I'm going to go ahead and make the swatch sheet for this because I haven't done that yet. And wow, they're sticky. Imgram for ya. So here's the palette opened up a little bit closer. And the reason it's dirty is because this is the palette that I received while I was on my Mexico watercolor retreat. She gave us some Sennelier paints, and that's what these are, squeezed into the corners. And there's actually one right here that's also squeezed into the corner. So this one is sharing for now because I am not going to get rid of Sennelier paint to use this palette. Anyway, the rest are all the M grams. This and this is the convenience mixture I made in that video. They're going to be a green and a red, so we'll see those on the swatch sheet. And I've pulled out my six inches by nine inches B paper. This is what I use in my beginner watercolor classes. It seems to be good paper for watercolor swatches as well. So I have nine inches here, but I'm going to make 12 slots out of it. And I think I will go ahead and make it a little bit bigger because any white space I have on my swatch sheet, I can pull off like here. Once that swatch sheet is laminated, I can set it aside here and use that extra white space for mixing space. So that's what I'll be doing. We have nine inches and 12 spaces. So we just have to do a little bit of math. It's not too hard. It's kind of fun and relaxing. This is something I don't mind doing when I am totally wiped out. <laughs> here I have a 5H pencil from the commission I did. <laughs> it's all in graphite, oh my goodness. Anyway, nine inches divided by 12 spaces means that every space has to be three quarters of an inch apart. And then I will measure this right here and decide with lamination, if I make this, oh, let's do three and a quarter inches, then that will be fine. Just come over three and a quarter inches. Sometimes with these clear rulers, you don't have to do these little ruler marks because you can just line up the clear ruler and not have to worry about that. But three and a quarter inches is a little too wide. This ruler is only two inches wide, so that's why we have that. Actually, I could just cut this on the paper cutter at three and a quarter inches, and that would eliminate one of those reasons for doing that line. And then I'll probably make each well on the swatch sheet. Let's do an inch and a quarter. And this is where you can take advantage of this nice clear ruler and come over an inch and a quarter and you just line it up. You see how we're lining up the line on the ruler with the paper? That's why I love this ruler. It's so amazing. And we'll do our line there. Ta-da! I usually do this with like a Sharpie or some kind of permanent marker the first time, but I didn't think of that just now. So I'm gonna grab one of those. I'll be right back. I really love this fine the F, the 0 0.5 from Faber-Castell for this just works really well. So actually I'm gonna just start over here. We're gonna line it up again at an inch and a quarter, so easy. And then with our permanent marker, this is waterproof supposedly, right? I would suggest based on my experience to let it sit for a few minutes before you actually fully test that waterproofness on these. They all need a little bit of time to dry. If I'm going to put these three quarters of an inch apart, it's so nice with this clear ruler because I just line it up at three quarters of an inch. I don't have to make all those marks and then line the ruler up based on the marks because this is see-through. It just works. So if I did my math right and I do all of these three quarter inch marks across here, then should end up with 12 slots like I'm supposed to have at the end. I have my 12 marks and as usual, if you don't allow room for the marker, the one on the end gets a little skinny and I usually try to allow room for the thickness of the marker on the ruler. Didn't do it quite right this time, but it's fine. I don't care too much. So now this is what I was saying. If I would have just cut this at three and a quarter inches right from the beginning, I wouldn't have had to make that extra uh, pencil line there. And my cutter is getting super dull, so that's why I went bottom to top because it's a little sharper that direction for me. Do that, 
And then I really, really like my corners rounded on my swatch sheet. So I'll round this paper by just using a corner rounder. When I laminate this, I will also corner around the laminated sheet. And the only thing left is to do the painting. This is the fun part, and I'm gonna do it with salt too. And now I dig my favorite brush for this size stuff out of the case that I bring to watercolor class with me because that's the last time I use this brush. Kind of funny, but it's just a really cheap Royal and Lang Nickel round size six, and I love it. I can't find this brush all by itself, but I do always usually link it in the description box below as a set because Royal and Lang Nickel sells a whole set of round brushes for, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, 13 dollars, something like that. So for swatching with salt, which you can see I have here, I like to wet the whole swatch sheet area, a little rectangle, and get our already very wet Imgram paint. <laughs> it's firm, it's firm, it's just firm but squishy. It's firmish, it's firm, I don't know, it's fine, it's Imgram. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that is so beautiful. When I use these on the boat in that other video, I usually have my towel here and I don't have a towel. Anyway, the way they spread in water is just amazing. So then I'm going to grab a little bit more, do a bit different thing up there, and then salt along just the right edge of that swatch. So I'm going to skip one because I definitely got to the edge on that one and there's no way I can keep them apart at that level. Wow, the pigmentation load is, I've got to get a rag, this is ridiculous. Okay, the pigmentation load is really impressive on these. All right, a little extra, dab in the top, and I went over the line, doing really good today. Well, like I said, I am extra tired. Wow, that's pretty. This is the convenience mix I made between these two paints. I should probably get the box out here to figure out what those paints are, but that would take energy. Where's my little round thing? Oh, I have my little round thing here. This is how my little round thing ended up after the trip. I pulled it open and looked at it, and yeah, we had a lot of paint, like, oh, it's just sticking. It's sticking to this laminated sheet. So that is a mixture between the Quinn Rose and the Scarlet Pyrrol, which is a very orange pyrrol, but that's what we have. And so I mixed the two together and we have this beautiful red. I'm really glad I did that. Forgot the salt and it's probably not gonna do anything because it's too dry now. Easily distracted today, easily distracted. All right, next one. This one, the dioxazine purple. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, <laughs> so pigmented and so pretty. It apparently was not too dry for that red to do stuff with salt because it is showing some pretty awesome things. All right, now we're skipping to the, oh my goodness, I can't read it. That's going to be the marine blue, ultramarine blue, phthalo green. So this one, ah, it's still squishy. Oops. <laughs> yeah, it's still squishy. And you know where you touch it with water, it's actually going to be watery. Super fast. Oh my goodness. I was gonna say that one's a little harder to re-wet than the others, but never mind. <laughs> the pigment payload for this is, as with the others, amazing. Okay, cool. Now I have wet hands and I'm gonna touch salt, so that's not gonna work very well, but whatever. Yeah, the salt just wants to stick to my fingers instead of go down on the paper. There we go. Get enough salt on it and it'll work. I, oh man. Too much phthalo still in the brush. I'm doing this video as much for you guys as for me because I really wanted this swatch sheet done for this. And I have an idea for this palette that I wanted to use it. Yeah, I've got a lot of phthalo. That phthalo doesn't want to come out of that brush very well. Just have a feeling it's gonna tweak the results of that. So I'm gonna start over here. And this one is the transparent brown, I think. What is it called? Transparent red brown? Transparent red iron oxide. PR 101. So these can be a little interesting sometimes. Like they don't often like to layer without getting, what do you call it, like sticky, clammy? I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but if you've worked with this paint, this pigment, you know what I mean. 
I like it though. I like this color a lot. So this one is definitely dry enough on both sides. We can go back to it. And that one I decided to put here with the yellows because it is yellowish. It is the Azo Green. Anyway, my husband and little Jack were home a little bit longer than usual today because they had some business to do here. I got to play with Jack a little bit longer today. Couldn't really play with him much though because I had so much work to do on the commission, but he was so excited every time he came in and got to see me and I got to see him. He's so cute. He's such a good puppy. Azo Green. Oh, salt. I almost forgot the salt. I'm so tired, but it's like one of those days where, yeah, you're tired, but not gonna go to sleep. You're not gonna go take a nap or anything like that because it's just not gonna work and you know it. Yeah, it's one of those days. All right, this one is beautiful. Scarlet Pyrrol. Wow, look at the spread. Oh, I went into the, oh, I'm so bad about that. Oh man, dang it. <laughs> Whatever. So I accidentally pulled some salt over from that other one into this one, but it's okay. Having a little extra salt effect in the swatch sheet is not gonna be a big deal. I really love that convenience mixture red I made. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, look how that activates. That was completely dry, that little piece of red there that I activated, and I touched water to it, and it exploded even though it was dry, so good to know. I wonder if I touch that purple, it'll do the same thing. I bet so, but maybe I shouldn't touch it. I think I'm gonna go around it just to be safe. Yeah, learning these Ingram watercolors is really fun. There's, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So I had really a lot of fun with the Rosa Gallery watercolors because they reminded me of my core paint so much and these are doing the same thing. They're reminding me of my core paints and just the color explosions that happen and how fun they are to just paint with and deal with. It's just cool. Just blow off the little rectangle, make sure there's no salt there. Next to dioxazine purple should be the ultramarine blue. After my travel video where I just threw this tiny palette into the bag and didn't care which orientation it was, it worked out fine with this little palette, but I also had this sitting over the top of it with the screw on lid. Anyway, you guys are like, no, definitely don't travel with those unless they're flat, but I think you can get away with it in this teeny tiny palette. I would never try that with this big palette though. Holy moly, that would be a complete wreck, I bet. Even here in the dry climate of Colorado, and we traveled to the very dry climate of Utah most of our trips. So we're either in Colorado or Utah, sometimes California, which is not that dry, but mostly Colorado and Utah. I don't think I would ever travel with this bigger Imgram palette unless I knew for a fact that I could keep it flat. This little one, that doesn't worry me so much. I'll throw that in anywhere. Okay, so this is exciting. We get to do our next convenience mixture. And I didn't even get to test this out. I just like mix some of the paint together and we'll see what we have. This was a mixture of this phthalo green, I think. I don't even remember. Or the blue. Shoot, we'll have to go watch that other video. But with, wow, with both yellows. <laughs> so the Azo yellow and the Indian yellow should be fun to see what it looks like. Actually, there's not enough water on that now because I've talked too long. Okay, now there is. Ooh. Oh, I like it. <laughs> That's a good green. You guys, we made a good green. Wow, that was way too much water. But look, we made a beautiful green. I was a little worried about that one because the well was getting really full and I didn't get to test it. But when I was mixing those paints together, it looked kind of nice, so I was hoping for the best. Okay, I'm really happy with that green. We'll see if I'm happy with it when I actually paint with it because that is the true test, right? Do you actually use the green? I suspect I will because greens are one of my most favorite colors. Okay, this one, neutral tint. I won't touch this Sennelier paint there. I don't even remember what it is, if it's a Payne's gray or some kind of indigo blue. Oh, that's so pretty. Why do I like neutral tint so much? I don't know, but I do. When I touched water into that one, it really ran back into the paint, so that's why I dabbed some more paint and I'm pulling it through because that was a pretty drastic back run of water there. Oh, that was like 10 tons of salt, but that's okay. All right, when I see you again, these will all be dry and labeled. See you in a minute. Actually, 
See you in a second. All dry, all the salt is rubbed off, I think. I'm trying to get all the salt off anyway because I don't want to laminate it with any salt crystals remaining. You can see how pretty they are with salt. So now I take a Scotch Thermal Laminating Pouch. These are not my favorite laminating sheets. The ones I like are actually kind of like a bulk brand that I can't find currently, but that's okay. These work for now. Anyway, you can see here it's just that, and I cut the little corner out of it so I wouldn't waste one when I did this little sheet here. And in order to use this still, I will just open it up and stick in this little cute swatch sheet right over here. Make sure it's somewhat even across the top. And I will stick that through my scotch thermal laminator. Everything's linked below. I've used this particular scotch thermal laminator for years and it has never failed me. Now that this is all laminated, as you can see by the studio light reflection, I just take my cutter and cut out a nice border around it, something that will not compromise the lamination. Then I take my corner rounder and make sure I use the same corner round that I used on the paper. So in this case, I used the four millimeter, so that's what I'm gonna do for the lamination sheet. But we'll do that on every corner, and sometimes it doesn't like it, chews it up, so we have to flip it over. Anyway, I have this beautiful laminated swap sheet. You can see it fits in here just great. Shuts, no problem, no issues. It's not a tightly shutting palette anyway, but that's okay. So look, look how sticky, hang on, hang on. You see that? I just push it down, stick, stick. And there's barely anything on the sides, but this paint is so sticky. Anywhere there is paint, it's gonna stick. And look, yeah. And at this point, this palette has probably been poured for two weeks. I'll double check and put that on the screen for you. But we've got some paint left over, so yeah, Imgram is sticky, anyone who's wondering, even here in Colorado. I mean, it's only been two weeks, but I actually don't expect that this will set up very much more. Because usually when I pour paint and it dries out, it dries out immediately if it's going to, and it doesn't if it's not going to. Look how pretty. So I can use this as extra mixing space here. If I want to see my colors, if I need to flip it over and have a lot more extra mixing space, I can do that. But guys, let's admit it, I never use more mixing space than this. I could probably get away with just this mixing space because I, I don't know, I just work that way. Unless I'm doing like really big wash for a background, I don't need a lot of mixing space. So this is great. It shows me all my colors, which are really important. When you get into these darker colors, you don't really know what they are. So having the swatch sheet for me is invaluable. All right, that's it, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed doing a swatch sheet with me and how do you do your swatch sheets? Do you measure them? Do you do them willy-nilly? How do you do them? I'm very curious actually. All right guys, I will see you in the next video as usual. Stay tuned for bloopers. And lately we've been having puppies at the end of every video. So eventually that'll run out because puppies grow up, but I still have my cats. Anyway, we still have a lot of puppy videos to get through, so enjoy. I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, if I suddenly disappear off YouTube for some reason, something happened to my heart. Yeah, I had heart surgery a couple years ago, and the EKG yesterday at the doctor's office was not normal, and they don't know if it's related to my surgery or something else, but I've been feeling a little bit off, so if I disappear, I don't know that you guys have a way to get a hold of me to find out what's going on, but it's my heart. Oh, I forgot I had something in my eye and I rubbed all my makeup off this eye. I don't wear much makeup anyway, but whatever. We're going with it. Measurement round thing. <laughs> Stop wiggling. Look at him. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Hello, Ringo. Hello, Ringo. <laughs> Come on, Peppy. Look at her all. <laughs> oh, why are you biting my pants already, kid? Puppies. <laughs> Ow, you're getting a little aggressive. <laughs> Hi, Jack. Or are you Wilma? I can't tell.
You're Jack. <laughs> yeah, I just couldn't see them both in the screen at the same time. He's so cute.